Okay, I want to make sure that when the idle screw touches the piston slide that I stop right there so that then I can count two turns in and do that on the other side so they're both the same. So I'm putting tension with my finger against the piston slide, pushing against it to hold it still. And I'm going to just screw the idle screw in and it screws in pretty loosely as it is so I know I'll be able to feel the difference when it hits, when it kind of butts up, there it goes. When it butts up against it, you can feel the tension on the screw gets a little bit different. And right there, you can actually feel that it stops. It snubs up against the piston slide. So I'm going to stop right there. And let's get a screwdriver. Well, let's see, you can't do that on the other side. Just trying to think of a way we can mark that and know that we've gone two turns in. All right, we've got it the king size permanent marker. So let's mark the top of that idle screw. Let it dry and I'll turn that in two turns. All right, well through the magic of video, idle screw is now turned in two turns. That's our starting point. We might need to go higher that to reach the correct idle for this machine which is around, uh, what is it, 16 to 1900 somewhere around there. So we'll adjust that later and that way I can adjust both screws the same keeping both carbs in sync. So now I'm going to do the the carburetor further over, find out where the, the idle screw touches the piston slide and then go two turns in and we'll stop right there. Okay, I've now got the carburetor farther over, two turns in and on this one, the one of the knurls on the idle knob is at the very top when it connected with the piston slide. So I marked it but I've also left it so that that knurl at the top is two turns in. So I have to make a note of that each time I turn that screw that that top knurl next to the black mark is actually top center. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do to the carburetors before trying to start the motor is I'm going to turn these air idle screws all the way in until they seat gently. There it goes. That one is now seated. It's stopped. You don't want to crank on these because you're actually screwing into an aluminum hole in there and you could really deform things badly if you really crank on it. You don't have to put much pressure at all in turning the screwdriver and it will stop on its own right there. So now I'm going out one turn. There's half a turn. There's one turn. And that is what my shop manual recommends for this 1988 Polaris Indy Trail motor carburetor setup. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the second carburetor. And this sled, as far as the carburetors go, should be good to hit the snow. Okay, even though I haven't run this sled since last November or December and this is September and I've had the fuel shut off this whole time it might take a while to start up so I'm gonna go full enrichment on the lever turn the gas on it's probably gonna take a few pulls to get the fuel pump to pump fuel into those carburetors eventually it should start up and I've got a, uh, a pan that I use to change the oil in the car underneath the exhaust to catch any oil that's bound to be in the system that'll come out the exhaust and instead of getting all over the floor it'll just dump into that oil change pan that's the plan and let's see what happens make sure the kill switch is not activated key is on let's see what happens Okay, I do have the door open in the garage, the side door and the main door and one of the window screens and it's a windy day, hopefully this won't take too long to clear out. 
but I've already looked at the tachometer and the idle is around 3,000 RPM. So I'm going to back these out half a turn on the idle screws and start it up again and see where we're idling next. As a side note, the sled's track is up off the floor. I'm on a stand. Uh, if, it, if the clutch does engage, the sled's not going anywhere. That is very important if you're messing with the idle for the first time like we just did, is to make sure the track is not on the floor because the sled could take off once you start it and run into something or someone and that would not be good. So make sure the track is off the floor on a stand before you start the sled for the first time after adjusting those idle screws. I'm surprised the idle is as high as it is on two turns in. I've gone out half a turn on each one. So I started it up and it still seems to be running a little bit faster than it should. All right, well that right there is pretty close to 2000 RPM. If I adjust the idle screws back even just a little bit, it drops down and stutters around 1500 and doesn't idle smooth at 1500. So I've turned them in just a pinch on each one and so they're around 2000 but the idle is smooth that's fine clutch engagement isn't until somewhere between three and four so I'm still out, out of that range so it's not gonna accidentally go down the trail without me so I think we're done adjusting the carburetors here on this 1988 488 Polaris Indy trail good luck with your sled and again download your shop manual that goes with your sled for your year and it's a big help when you have questions about how things should be adjusted